Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Modern naval ships stand among the largest and most technologically advanced vessels ever constructed, often costing billions of dollars each. Despite their complexity, they are still machines of war, packed with thousands of pounds of munitions, missiles, and fuel. Aircraft carriers, in particular, hold massive amounts of jet fuel and can operate with as many as 75 aircraft aboard at once. While enemy attacks remain a constant concern, one of the most dangerous threats these ships face is fire. The abundance of flammable and explosive materials makes any blaze on board extremely hazardous. Moreover, since naval vessels often operate hundreds of miles from the nearest port or support ship, the crew must rely solely on their own training and resources to contain and extinguish any fire that occurs. Every crew member aboard a U.S. Navy vessel receives firefighting instruction. Though certain men and women are designated to lead during a fire, it is crucial that everyone knows how to act quickly to suppress it. Combating a fire involves using hoses and other suppression tools to confine the flames and prevent them from spreading. To do this effectively, crew members must work as a coordinated unit. Indeed, a major part of any fire drill focuses on rehearsing such synchronized actions. One of the most likely sources of a fire aboard an aircraft carrier is an aircraft-related accident. With jet fuel, weaponry, and other planes nearby, any blaze must be extinguished immediately. Drills for such incidents involve every member of the flight deck crew, regardless of their assigned duty. This preparation proved invaluable in 2011 when an F-18 performing a touch and go caught fire. Before the aircraft could return to the flight deck, the crew aboard the USS Carl Vinson was already bracing for a potential blaze. Within seconds, they had blanketed the F-18 inches fire-suppressing foam, extinguishing the flames, saving the aircraft, and most importantly, rescuing the pilot. Fortunately, not every shipboard fire demands such rapid crew intervention. Naval ships worldwide are equipped with automated systems designed to limit the spread of flames. Slabber. Among the most significant of these is the fire suppression foam system, 
typically installed in the hangar bay, capable of releasing thousands of gallons of foam within seconds. Crew members can also manually tap into the foam system to assist the automatic process. Aircraft carrier flight decks are further equipped with a countermeasure washdown system, essentially a vast sprinkler network with nozzles distributed across the deck. This system can be activated not only during a fire, but also in response to a chemical attack or fuel spill. One of the most infamous and publicized shipboard fires occurred aboard the USS Bonhomme Richard. Commissioned in 1998, this WASP-class amphibious assault ship played a critical role in the US Navy. It carried a crew of about 1,100 sailors and transported nearly 2,000 Marines, landing craft, and aircraft to combat zones around the world. Although smaller than an aircraft carrier, the Bonhomme Richard measured 844 feet in length and weighed roughly 40,000 tons. After years of reliable service, it took just one severe fire to end its career. In the early morning of July 12, 2020, an explosion erupted aboard the USS Bonhomme Richard while it was docked in its home port of San Diego, California. The ship was undergoing repairs, and fortunately, much of its crew was not aboard at the time. Unfortunately, this also meant that the ship's internal fire suppression systems were disabled for maintenance. Reports later showed that the fire was fueled by paper, cloth, and rags rather than fuel or other hazardous materials and originated in a vehicle storage area. Once detected, firefighters on land, sea, and air immediately mobilized to save the ship. They filled dozens of oxygen tanks so crews could enter the vessel safely without succumbing to toxic smoke. The explosion injured 17 crew members and four civilians, though most were later released from the hospital. However, around 50 additional people were hurt during firefighting efforts mostly from heat exhaustion and smoke inhalation. Specialized firefighting boats surrounded the ship for hours, spraying seawater at multiple levels. Fire trucks from San Diego were deployed to attack the flames from the docks while helicopters dropped fire-suppressing foam from above. The most difficult job fell to those who had to board the ship itself, searching for hot spots amid extreme heat and dense smoke. In total, it took five continuous days of firefighting to completely extinguish the blaze. Damage assessments revealed that 11 of the ship's 14 decks were affected, many of which had buckled or collapsed due to the intense heat. The Bonham Richard fire resulted in the total loss of a vessel valued at over $2 billion. 
had it taken place at sea instead of in port, it could have caused a significant loss of life. Though the U.S. military has long emphasized firefighting training, this incident prompted renewed attention to preparedness across the fleet. Firefighters, known in the Navy as damage controlmen, train using real fires and authentic equipment to better understand how to handle emergencies aboard ships. Their exercises include hose handling techniques, firefighting maneuvers, teamwork coordination, and nozzleman relief procedures. Since most naval ship decks are metallic and confined, conditions can make firefighting extremely difficult. This makes teamwork essential, and speed just as critical. Damage controlmen must be ready to suit up and tackle a blaze within minutes of its detection. The threat of shipboard fire is so serious that even nations that rarely cooperate will sometimes join forces for fire safety training. Sailors from the RFS Admiral Chabanenko of Russia and HMS Dauntless of the United Kingdom took part in a joint exercise known as FRUCUS at the Ferrier Firefighting Facility at Naval Station Norfolk, Virginia. Here, they learned the fundamentals of firefighting, including the proper operation of equipment such as hoses and nozzles. Fire hoses can deliver high-pressure streams of water or foam with adjustable nozzles to control the flow. A vital part of this training involves relieving the nozzlemen and replacing them with another team member. Because the nozzleman stands closest to the flames, remaining in that position too long can result in serious heat-related injuries. Facilities like the one in Norfolk use advanced fire simulation technology, giving trainees and observers a realistic experience. Aircraft hangars are enclosed structures primarily designed to shelter aircraft from the elements and sunlight, as well as to facilitate maintenance, manufacturing, repair, and assembly. Although hangars are built with safety in mind, maintenance areas can still pose significant fire risks. Foam fire suppression systems are highly effective at putting out fires in hangar bays, but they can occasionally activate accidentally. The U.S. military learned this firsthand in 2014 when a fire suppression system was unintentionally triggered during a routine alarm test at the National Guard Station in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The foam spread inside and outside the hangar, covering three Black Hawk helicopters parked nearby. The main drawback of foam fire suppression systems is that they create thick foam bubbles to smother flames, which drastically reduces visibility and can make rescuing trapped personnel extremely difficult. A team from Edwards Fire and Emergency Services conducted a search and rescue training exercise at Edwards Air Force Base, California, where foam quickly spread across the hangar floor, concealing a dummy beneath it.
Firefighters used hoses to clear paths through the foam so they could enter. Initially, locating the dummy was challenging within the dense foam. But the team eventually found and extracted it safely. A foam fire suppression system is a relatively new technology that relies on chemical mixtures to create foam, which can pose risks during offshore use. In November 2019, scientists at the Naval Research Lab conducted extensive studies to develop a type of foam that could extinguish fires both onshore and offshore while using fewer harmful chemicals. Throughout the research, chemical engineers tested various fire suppressants to determine the most effective option for ships operating at sea. The threat of fire continues to be one of the gravest dangers aboard any naval vessel. Despite advancements in ship design, firefighting systems, and training, the confined environments, volatile fuels, and explosive ordnance aboard make even minor fires potentially catastrophic. Incidents like the Bonhomme Richard blaze stand as stark reminders of how quickly a routine situation can escalate into a full-scale emergency. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.